to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and today I'm in the city of Hue here in central Vietnam. So we started our tour in Vietnam in the city of Hoi An, then we went to Da Nang, and now we've traveled about two hours north of Da Nang to Hue. And this city is known for its food. You come here to eat, and that's why we are here. So today, we're gonna be taking you to eat all the famous things you must try here in the city of Hue. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Vietnamese food. So any trip to Hue is not complete without a taste of their namesake dish. It's called Ban Bo Hue. It's a uh, beef noodle from Hue. So it's like, for you Americans watching, having a Philly cheesesteak in Philly, this is the place to eat Ban Bo Hue, even though it's famous all across the whole country. And we're at this place called Ban Bo Hue O Fung, and they've got a big bubbling cauldron of meatballs out front, and she starts with a bowl of the uh, rice noodles, and then uh, I ordered everything, so she grabs a big chunk of meat, and then the real key here, she takes some raw meat and very quickly blanches it, raw beef, lets it kind of quickly cook, but not whatsoever cooked, just very medium rare, if you will. A couple of those meatballs, there's also some blood in here, and this is the final result. It is a beautiful, beautiful bowl of beef noodles, bun bo hui. You've gotta eat, at least start your trip, end your trip, or just completely fill your trip full of bun bo hui when you're visiting Hue, so let's try. Yum. Super, super beefy. A little bit salty. Not quite salty actually. Let's try some of the noodles. Wow. It's good, but it tastes very salty actually. I'm surprised how salty it is. There's quite a bit of MSG in there as well. Let me try to go in for some of the some of that beef that she quickly blanched. Yeah. beef is super tender. I'll just grab some of the herbs here, throw that on top, and then there's also some lemon on the table, which you can definitely use because I'm surprised at how salty it is. Still really good, beefy, just a little bit too salty, I think. Mm. Definitely needs the lemon. <clears throat> there's just huge chunks of meat like this one in here. I feel like this is probably not the best Bun Bo Hue in Hue. A little bit too salty for my liking, but still not bad. <coughs> I'm meat lovers noodles. We like since we are here in Vietnam, we try a lot of noodle dishes like this one, the Bun Bo Hue. So, if you are noodle lovers, I think Vietnam is a perfect place for you. Like I said, probably just not the best. We didn't pick the best one in the city for sure, but uh, there's so many Bun Bo Hue here in Hue. Uh, we'll keep going. We'll find some good food here. Hue is famous for its food, so there's got to be something. So we've actually come out to a little island that's called uh, Hen Dun, and it's famous for its kom hen, which is this dish right here. It's a dish of baby river clams. You can see the tiny little clams there. It's served on a bed of rice, and you also have some peanuts in there, some uh, pork rinds, and it looks like some bean spreads. There's some cilantro. She told me I'm gonna mix this up really well. And this is a dish that is famous uh, across central Vietnam, across Vietnam actually, but this is actually the original location of the Kom Hen, the baby river clams rice of the rivers just surrounding us now because we're on the island and the clams actually come from uh, that river. Let's give it a try. It's a sleepy day here in Hue. We're the only customers right now of this restaurant, but we really wanted to come try this out. This place is really famous. It's called uh, Kom Hen Hoa Dong. Let's try it. Mm. Mm. 
So a little bit on the sweet side, a little bit seafood flavor, or kind of clam flavor. It's actually sort of cold. I was not expecting that. It's, it's really cold actually. I don't know if it's supposed to be served cold, but it's all right. Not my favorite. Sorry guys, we had to cut that part short. I am not totally sure that was okay to eat. It was served freezing cold, like really cold. The clams were cold, the rice was cold, everything. The flavor was fine. Uh, maybe we just came at a time where it wasn't busy enough for them to be serving warm, fresh, or maybe it's supposed to be served cold. I'm not sure, but wasn't really my uh, preference. So we're just gonna keep going on our food tour here in Hue. Also not easy to get to this restaurant. We had to take a motorbike down this little alley and then take a taxi onto the island. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. To be honest, maybe we just came at the wrong time, the wrong day. Not to mention it's completely flooded. Look at this. It's getting all over me. I understand that some of the salads and stuff here in Vietnam are served chilled, but that was served like freezing cold. I feel like those clams have been sitting out way too long and I've had some bad experiences with clams in the past. So we decided to cut that a little short. We're gonna go have some coffee next to wash down the Coleman. So this is a really cool old school cafe. It's inside of a traditional Vietnamese home, like made out of wood, completely made out of wood. And here in Hue, they're known for something called salt coffee. It's a relatively new invention and as the name suggests it's it's coffee with salt so this is how it was brought out to us and to be honest i don't really know what i'm supposed to do here um i've got this which looks like the salt you can see the salt in the bottom there with the uh frothy milk on top and she told me to mix it up that's all she said was mix it up and i'm just gonna dump, dump the ice inside of here and then i'm guessing this has got to be the coffee in here right Oh, that's tea. That's not coffee. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, that's tea, not coffee. So I guess this is the salt coffee, just like this. And that's why she gave us a little teacups, I guess. So tea with our coffee if you want it. I just wanted coffee, but okay. I'm so confused. Let's try this salt coffee here in Hawaii. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's salty but it's really creamy and sweet at the same time. Actually, it's really good. It's like a balance of sweet and savory. Mm. Definitely helps wash away some of the flavor of the food we had this morning. You guys know me, I'm not a picky eater whatsoever. I rarely taste something on our travels that I don't enjoy, but I do wanna be honest with you, those first two foods that we tried this morning here in Hue were severely underwhelming. I don't know if we just picked the wrong spots. We do. We did the same research we do everywhere we go, but uh, I don't know, just wasn't to my liking so far, but we're gonna continue our food tour here in Hawaii, and I'm sure we'll find something. Ming thinks she's gonna have a heart attack because there's so much MSG in that bundle. Oh, wait. Personally, I don't really believe that MSG has any kind of effect on people, but Mink seems to it think is. it does. It stops you making me feel like dizzy. Yeah. And like well, dizzy. you heard it from a Thai woman herself. Not the Canadian guy. The coffee is good. It's really salty, like just like the name. But I want to say one thing. I feel like they say that your instinct all way right, but I feel like you can't do that in Vietnam, especially like Vietnamese food and like Vietnamese coffee because we follow our instinct. But like Vietnamese food is like complicated to eat because like I said, you can't just not eat it by itself. You mean you because we to, thought like... the teapot had coffee? Yes. <laughs> that was kind of a stupid we... thing no. to think No, okay. Though. We thought that teapot has coffee because look at the color yeah. of this salty coffee. Is that the color of the coffee? Yeah, it's really white. No. So we thought there was coffee in a teapot, but now it makes sense. <laughs> I just don't know why we got tea and coffee. Yeah, just don't trust your instincts in Vietnam. Everything is not what it seems.
Actually, I'm starting to really like the salt coffee. It's a perfect combination. Not like super salty, but mixture with the sweet and salty and frothy. It's actually really nice. Mm. We're gonna keep going and find some good food here in a way. I'm sure we can. that you can't go wrong with Ban Mi here in central Vietnam. So to save the day, we've come to this place called Ban Mi O Tho. And they have so many different ingredients that you can get inside your Ban Mi. It's kind of like a Subway sandwiches, street food style. You can pick and choose what you want, but we just got a typical filling, the uh, barbecue filling, Tit Nuong. So here it is. You can see, look how tiny that is. It's probably the tiniest little Ban Mi that I've ever seen, but I think this is only 15,000, is that right, Ming? 15,000? Yeah, 15,000, so super cheap, even though it's super tiny. And just sitting on a tiny little stool here. There's no tables, just stools in this little area here. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. This is a really simple bun me. It's just the barbecue pork with a really sweet sauce all over it and then some cilantro. The bread is nice and fresh, but I took one bite of that and I'm like 30% done the banh mi already. Like you could eat probably three of these, no problem. Mm. Okay. Finally something delicious here in Hue. The sauce that they've got the barbecue pork in, it's like really sweet caramelized and she added a little bit of extra sauce there too. And I love the Vietnamese culture of sitting on these tiny stools. Look how tiny this stool is right here. It's literally less than a foot tall. No tables, banh mi. Mm. Easily can have seconds here at this banh mi shop. They're so tiny. And one thing that I love they do here in Vietnam is they toast the banh mi before they serve it to you. So it comes warm, toasted on charcoal, gives it a little smoky and crispiness. How is in that? What's that? Whoa. I have no idea what that is. It's like mochi. Look at that. Look at that. It, it's, a, it's a dumpling. There's a dumpling inside of this one. Apparently we ordered a dumpling in this version. <laughs> That's like the bot lock, I think. Like those tapioca dumplings. Look at it. I was not expecting that. I thought I just ordered two barbecue. Not one barbecue and one dumpling version. Mm. And this one's got spice in it too. It's got some heat. That's kind of weird, but good. Okay, serious redemption in Hue. Awesome banh mi's. Tiny little guys, but really good. I think we've got more in us for tonight that wasn't filling. place is super local. It's just set up under a couple tarps and they're selling something called ban kan, which is a thick noodle soup. There's a couple women working around a couple boiling cauldrons of the broth and it is a beautiful looking bowl for a quite casual <laughs> restaurant. But look at that, just absolutely gorgeous bowl of noodles. So this is ban kan, like I said, a thick noodle soup and it's famous for uh, having this this crab cake in it. Well, this spot in particular serves it with this crab cake on the inside. You can see the, the noodles there. There's some pork rinds and there's some veggies in there as well. And you can see too, a little quail's egg in there. So this is perfect for the cold weather. By the way, who would have known central Vietnam gets quite cold in the winter? I didn't, I guess I just should have researched better, but yeah, it's quite cold. You can see I've got my sweater on. Yeah, this is perfect. Oh, yes, that is definitely not too salty. Perfectly balanced. It's really a thick, hearty, rich kind of stew almost. Oh, yum, and 
Let me grab some of these noodles. You can see they're really short cut noodles, thick noodles. It's got a seafood flavor, fresh seafood. Let's try a piece of this crab cake. Yum. Oh. That is a beauty bowl. There's a bunch of stuff on the table here. There's these little quail's eggs right here. I'm not even sure if those are, I think they're boiled. I'm gonna skip them though. There's some things wrapped up in leaves here. I'm also gonna skip that. I'm just gonna go straight for the chili. This looks spicy. Oh. That might have been a little bit too much, but it's okay. Give that a mix. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Such an unassuming spot. Just down this kind of dark, somewhat sketchy, a little bit creepy alleyway, but serving super stellar noodles. Mm. That chili's gonna kick. <clears throat> Yum. I think it's going straight for the chili. chili Did you even taste it yet? I taste it. It's uh, really tastes like a seafood broth, but like you say, it's not salty, which I like it. It's super steamy. And this is weird, but I like the egg in the soup. That's not weird. Egg is really good. Really? But yeah. I like to like put eggs in everything. You do like to put <laughs> eggs in a lot of stuff. One quail egg is not enough, so I get my second quail egg. So I'm gonna say it took me around maybe one minute to peel the shell off. It's gonna disappear in one second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hui, I gave you another chance. That was really, really good. We're gonna go for some dessert next. This dessert place has all of these different colorful pots laying out with tons of different uh, ingredients that you can get mixed together either hot or ice. So they've got like uh, taro, I saw different red beans, mung beans, tofu, and they're really famous though for one in particular, which is this right here. I won't tell you what the filling is. I want you to try to guess before I tell you, but you've probably seen this if you watch our videos. It's uh, called Woloi in Thailand or Tang Yuan in Taiwan usually filled with sesame or peanuts, but this one is not filled with either of those. This is actually filled with roast pork. So this is like a roast pork dumpling served in ice. It's gonna be the first time I've ever tried it. Try to bite it in half so you can see. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That is weirdly good. Look at that. I was sort of expecting the pork to be like pulled pork, like shredded pork on the inside, but it's actually like chunks of pork. It reminds me of like Hong Kong cha sha bao, like a red pork uh, bao tzu. It was really weird though, because it's served in a sweet syrup that's iced, and it's like really lean pork. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know what to think about that. It's kind of good, but I would say it's dessert. It's more like a weird dumpling. <laughs> okay, one more. One bite. Very strange, but surprisingly good. <laughs> if you like, you order two separate things, a dumpling with a uh, pork fillings and then just like a uh, water in a, a glass of water in ice and then you accidentally <laughs> dip you <laughs> That is the origin story of Bot Lock Pit Quay is they accidentally dump accident, some pork yes. dumplings into ice water. You have to finish it because you already ordered two also. Yeah. That's the story that I think. 
Comment down below what you think about Mink's uh, food reviews. Please. Have mercy. Have mercy on her. She's still learning. It's really good. Actually, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's really good. It's really weird, but it's quite good. Mm -mm. No, nope, not brush. Mm. That looks good though, too. That was quite unique. The only thing I can say that it tastes like is cha shao bao, but I've never had cha shao bao floating in some uh, syrupy cold water, <laughs> but it was, it was really good. I mean, sweet and savory. It seems to be the main flavors here in Hue. I'd say 50-50 good day of eating. We might have picked the wrong places. I'm sure there's a lot more food that's more delicious than the ones we had today here in Hue. So definitely check it out if you're a foodie. It's a city you gotta visit. And uh, stay tuned, because we got more videos coming from Vietnam. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye.